A couple of weeks ago, I decided to order the base model of M2 Mac Mini to see if that could replace my M1 Max MacBook Pro. We got a lot of things to talk about. First off, I just want to say, uh, Guten Abend, as they say in Germany. My name is uh, Peter and I live in Sweden, so it makes absolutely no sense speaking German, but I know, uh, I know a couple of German words. Ich... Uh, Will. <laughs> that's basically it. That's how far my German knowledge goes. But we're not here to talk about my German. We're here to talk about the Mac Mini versus my MacBook Pro. The fun thing when it comes to these computers is that they are by far some of the best computers that I've used. It is amazing to see how far technology has come when it comes to having a desktop the size of the Mac Mini capable of doing so many things and then being able to have a laptop with you that can do everything as a creator that you wanted to do. But as I said in the beginning of this video, can the M2 Mac Mini replace my MacBook Pro? To give you a little bit of a backstory, I just want you to know that I've been using a MacBook Pro ever since the end of 2017. I actually bought my first MacBook Pro back then on credit, and I think it was kind of like the mid model of the 16 or 15 inch. I don't really remember which one it was. Hang on. Good old dusty, trustworthy Mac. This has been through a lot. It was uh, very good when it arrived and it was very bad as soon as the M ships arrived. <laughs> but the reason that I want to have a MacBook and not a PC was because I wanted to utilize Final Cut Pro because that is my main program that I'm editing my videos and doing all my content in. And if you're interested in learning how to use Final Cut Pro, you should definitely check out my course. I'm going to drop a link in the description. I decided to do a few starting tests between the two computers. And the first thing was booting up Photoshop to see how quickly both computers could boot up the program. In all honesty, I think that the difference is barely noticeable. When you're just sitting there, you're booting up the program, you're not going to realize that one takes a little bit longer than the other because it's basically the same. When it comes to Lightroom, it was almost instant. This is a little bit longer loading time that I noticed, but nothing that will basically affect the way that you're working with the program. Final Cut Pro, on the other hand, was blazing fast on both computers. And when you're editing in Final Cut Pro, I think that that is kind of where I spend most of my time. And there is a couple of bottlenecks when you're editing with the M2 Mac Mini compared to the M1 Max. Since the M1 Max is the best chip that you could get in the M1 series when it was released, it's also an unfair comparison in this sense, but I just want to make this so that you don't have to wonder, like, could you do what I do on an M2 Mac Mini? And the fact is that when you're editing in Final Cut Pro, you can edit on a 4K timeline with 4K footage, maybe all interim material that is basically uncompressed material, or jump up to something that's very compressed that I shot with the A7S III and that I shot with my Sony A1 without any issues at all. The only thing that takes a little bit of time is that you got to have background render on on the computer because the more clips you start to add the more it starts to chug through and you can definitely see that it starts to slow things down the bigger the project gets and this is an issue that i haven't had on the m1 max as of yet because whenever i do edit something on that computer it usually just chugs through it. I've been editing a lot of big stuff on it and a lot of different effects and a lot of different callouts and this kind of stuff, but there's not one single time that I felt that it can't do what I want it to do. And it doesn't slow things down, it just powers through it. When you're editing 8K footage on the M2 Mac Mini, that is where you definitely see some struggle before it has rendered out the footage. When you're working with it, you're gonna see it's gonna be a little bit choppy, it starts to lag, you're gonna get the uh, spinning uh, board ball, biting ball of death. But it's also something that's kind of expected from a computer like this, unless you actually let it render out the footage that you're dragging to the timeline. When I did the same kind of test, on the MacBook Pro though, there was no issues at all. I don't have background render turned on. It just flows through like butter and sunshine. <laughs> so you, yes, you can edit in 8K if you want to do that. If you're doing that on a daily basis, I would probably go for something else. But then, then again, 
you know, you, it works on a Mac mini. There was absolutely no issues running Final Cut Pro, Photoshop, and Adobe Illustrator together with Google Chrome at the same time and jump between the different programs. I didn't, did not have any sort of issues with lag or freezing up. And same thing goes on the M1 Max. There's absolutely no issues running a bunch of different programs in background. There is, however, a couple of key features that I instantly felt was lacking with the Mac Mini compared to the MacBook Pro, and that is having more Thunderbolt ports. When I'm working with my videos, I have a lot of different SSDs that I use to plug in. And for example, card readers like that, you know, you plug it in and you want to make sure they have different ports. And I would have loved the Mac Mini to have a few ports in the front instead of in the back because you usually plug SSDs into the front rather than the back of the computer. Could use a dock for it. There's multiple different ones that you can get that I've seen that looks really cool. Biggest downside with Mac Mini compared to the M1 Max MacBook Pro is the portability. This is a stationary computer, even though you can bring it with you. Like it's so small that you could actually fit it down into your camera bag. But you need a monitor. So I would have to bring this monitor with me at home and then I would have to bring the computer. I would need to bring a mouse and a keyboard. And that is something that you have already built into a laptop. And that is why I find a laptop to be one of the best computers that you can get if you're working as a creator. For example, if I'm traveling, I usually bring up my laptop at the airport so that I can start editing my videos that I've shot when I've been traveling. And I usually work at home. I work here at the studio. I just want to make sure that I have a workstation that I can work with. And portability is a huge factor that comes into play. But if you're not having a lot of portability involved in your job or in your hobby, as a videographer and content creator, photographer, and you just want to have a good computer at home that you can use to edit your videos with or edit your photos with, then I think that this is a freaking amazing computer and it blows my mind how much power you're getting for the price that you pay with the Mac Mini. I could legit do all of my work with this here at the studio. And in fact, my latest two videos that I've done has been finalized and edited on the M2 Mac Mini. Think about that. I would love to know, what do you think about the, the comparison and which computer would you buy and why are you going to buy the computer that you are? Drop a comment. Peter from Sweden is saying goodbye. Don't forget to subscribe and uh, oh, have a good one. Just lots applied with color grading. Oh, that's a big difference, right? So you can see how those small tweaks and those subtle changes that we did is giving this frame an entirely different look. It looks more dramatic. We have more greens, we have more blacks introduced and a little bit more blue.